the final horn has sounded. And today's game is complete. Time now for Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Cougar Post Game Live is brought to you by Big O Tires, the team you trust. Also by First Colony Mortgage, your trusted lender for all your mortgage needs. Visit firstcolonymortgage.com. Here's your host, Jason Shepard. Welcome into Cougar Post Game Live, presented by Big O Tires. Stop by your local Big O Tires for no credit needed financing and the lowest price on every tire every day. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Tough loss for the number one seed, BYU Cougars. They fall to the number two seed, Gonzaga Bulldogs, 71 to 59. Gonzaga earning the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament by winning the conference tournament. BYU certainly is in. Uh, no uh, concern of not going to the NCAA tournament. That uh, that is not an issue whatsoever. BYU is going. What's going to be interesting is the seating. And Charlie Cream is the Joe Lenardi of the women's bracketology. And he was on the broadcast uh, of the television broadcast. And they were asking him about BYU. And obviously this was very early in the game. Uh, but they were asking about scenarios in terms of what they thought would happen for BYU with a win uh, or versus a loss. And BYU is not going to improve its stock moving up a seed. Right now, they are a five seed in every bracketology. They are a net uh, ranking of nine. I, I still, even with this loss today, I still feel like BYU has been underseeded uh, all season long. I think they deserve to be higher than a five. Uh, some may say, well, now with the loss, it proves. No, I think at it, it, worst, if you're going to fall, based off of what they've done, I think. If anything, they should have fallen to a five. Uh, he did say, speaking of Charlie Cream, uh, that BYU was never going to increase its stock. They were never going to get higher than a five seed. So, so that's a worry that you don't have to think about. Uh, he did say that there's a chance that BYU stays a five seed even with this loss. Uh, but there's also a possibility they could fall maybe down to six. So in terms of this loss, what does it mean for BYU in terms of tournament seeding? It may be the difference in in one spot. BYU may fall from a five to six. I still believe BYU has done enough, even with this loss, based off of what they've done and how they've done it in terms of just blowing teams out of the water. All of the good wins uh, against top 25 teams, all the wins on the road to begin the season, I still believe they deserve right Right now to not fall any lower than five but we will obviously have to wait and see exactly what the uh, what the committee feels like uh, but that, I thought that was interesting to hear from uh, from Charlie Cream and his thoughts on BYU versus a win and a loss so either way uh, we'll have to wait and see till uh, selection Sunday BYU falling 71 to 59 and obviously it's going to be a tough week or so uh, for the Cougars to have to wait and see what their uh, ultimate uh, destination is their seating and all of that in the postseason. All right, let's get to some uh, college basketball scores for you. Games going on right now. Big Sky Championship quarterfinal between Montana and Northern Arizona. Northern Arizona with a 59-44 lead. That game in the fourth quarter, just under eight minutes to go. Conference USA Championship first round. UTEP leading UTSA 29-25. Florida Atlantic at Florida International, another Conference USA first-round matchup. Florida Atlantic with a 27-20 lead. New Mexico State and Lamar in the WAC tournament opening round. The uh, Aggies with a 21-19 lead over Lamar Cal Poly and Cal State Fullerton. Big West Championship first round. Cal Poly with a one-point lead, 15-14. Some finals from earlier today. Opening round tournament game for the WAC. UT Rio Grande Valley defeating Seattle University by 10, 71-61. In overtime, Cal State Bakersfield winning by one point over CSUN, Cal State Northridge. I know they don't like to be called that anymore. 63-62, Bakersfield getting the victory in the uh, American Athletic Conference quarterfinal. SMU defeating Temple 63-55, also in the American uh, 25th ranked. Central Florida getting the win over Tulsa, 69-54. to Iona over Riders, 74-58. St. Peter's over Marist, 49-29. to 
And uh, in the Horizon League Championship final, uh, IUPUI defeats Cleveland State 61 to 54. BYU falls in the championship game of the West Coast Conference in Las Vegas by a final score of 71 to 59. That is going to wrap up Cougar Post Game Live. After the break, we'll get you back down to the Orleans Arena for the Cougar Locker Room Show. You'll hear from Coach Jeff Judkins and players with Greg and Kristen. Your final from Las Vegas. Gonzaga, 71, BYU, 59, and you heard it all right here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Cougar fans, Bam Bam's Barbecue brings you an authentic Central Texas barbecue. Whether it's our tender brisket or mouth-watering pulled pork, you always get great barbecue and a wonderful atmosphere. Come to us or we'll come to you. We cater office, church, family, and tailgate parties. We'll bring you everything you need for you and your guests to enjoy Texas barbecue. Bam Bam's Barbecue is located at 1708 South State Street in Orem, just north of the BYU campus. Bam Bam's Barbecue, a proud sponsor of BYU Athletics. Cougar fans, it's time to gear up and get ready for some BYU sports. The BYU Store is the number one source for all your quality, authentic BYU clothing. We carry the latest Nike sideline clothing just like the BYU players and coaches wear. The official BYU basketball game day shirts are only $10.99. Get into the campus store, the stadium store, or online at BYUstore.com for the widest selection and best pricing of BYU clothing and accessories. The BYU Store, official outfitter for BYU fans everywhere. Find out why more people have trusted Utah Eye Centers for their LASIK surgery than any other Utah provider. With advanced technology, four locations, and thousands of satisfied patients. Utah Eye Centers, the clearest choice in eye care. When your children see better, they feel better and do better in school and sports. Utah Eye Centers specializes in pediatric eye care and can help your little one bring their life into focus. Utah Eye Centers, the clearest choice in eye care. So you're scrolling through social media. Anything incredible? A picture of the salad your sister ate for lunch? A naughtily written I love you note from grandma? What about that one friend celebrating 28 and a half days of being engaged? Why not check out BYU Radio instead? If you love discovering inspiring quotes from inspiring people, entertaining behind the scenes of your favorite shows, or uplifting announcements from the hosts you love, then follow BYU Radio on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. BYU Radio. Our exclusive post-game coverage continues with the Cougar Locker Room Show. The Cougar Locker Room Show is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Now let's head back to the Bilt Bar courtside seats and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Well, tough shooting couple days for the Cougs here in Las Vegas, the second of which ends up with Gonzaga defeating BYU by a final score of 71-59. to Gonzaga takes another WCC Tournament Championship, and BYU now awaits Selection Sunday and another NCAA Tournament bid. This is the Cougar Locker Room Show. It is brought to you in part by Brady Industries, a provider of commercial cleaning supplies and equipment. Brady Industries, honestly better. Learn more at BradyIndustries.com. We'll head down to the Cougar press conference, the Cougar postgame press conference uh, momentarily. Greg Rubel and Kristen Kozlowski with you here in Las Vegas. And, uh, you know, the, the phrase peaking at the right time, I think, applied in, to BYU in a lot of ways. You win eight straight. Uh, you've won 18 of 19. Uh, the team you're playing, you've beaten twice. There were a lot of things tilting in BYU's favor. You just have to credit Gonzaga came out and really took BYU out of what it wanted to look like early. Never really relented. BYU did get to within three on two occasions, though, in the fourth quarter. And again, kudos to the Zags to have the immediate response and never let this gym really kind of tilt in BYU's favor because it got loud with BYU fans in the fourth quarter when that run commenced and culminated at getting within three. Now, this is a team that played a very strong preseason schedule. I mean, Lisa Fortier does not back away from strong. They played Stanford twice, played Utah out of the Pac-12. I mean, some tough, tough games to prepare themselves for the long stretch here. And so caught, came into this game, ran the plan that they needed to, executed at a high level. BYU, I just thought there were too many scoring droughts, too many moments where they couldn't get it done. Let's head to the press conference room and hear what head coach Jeff Judkins and his players have to say. We'll head there now. Okay, we're here with BYU head coach Jeff Judkins, and we have student athletes Paisley Harding and Maria Albiero. Go ahead and start with an opening comment from Coach Judkins. Well, first of all, um, I want to congratulate Gonzaga. They played really well tonight. Um, 
they're the they're the tournament champs. But I'm proud of my team because we are the conference champs. We played a two month and a half season and fought through a lot of stuff. Tonight just wasn't our night. We just didn't play the way we normally do. And it happens sometimes, but I'm so proud of these guys and knowing that they accomplished the conference championship and that they got in the final of the game. And uh, now we're going to be off to something we've been really working hard for the NCAA tournament. And uh, can't be more proud of these two right here. They, uh, they put their effort all the time. And uh, I thought they showed it tonight when when we were down, they didn't give up. They kept playing, they kept trying. And uh, that's worth more than any win. See your team fight, see your team compete and not, not want to go down. So I'm really proud of them. Okay, media, we will, excuse me, we will ask that you keep it to a single question the first time around. We've also got several people on Zoom would like to get to as many people as we can in the time allowed. So we'll go ahead and start with coaches for the student or questions for the student athletes from within the room. Raise your hand, we'll get you the mic. Paisley, obviously um, this is not the end of BYU's season, but um, can you just describe what the mood was like in the locker room after the game? Um, I mean, it's kind of obvious we're disappointed, but um, there's so much up to our team. We went out there and fought. They fought harder, um, unfortunately, and they really uh, played well tonight against us, Gonzaga did. But yeah, obviously we're disappointed. Paisley, you guys haven't had to recover from a lot of losses this year. What's the process and, and where does the team go from this point? Um, we're watching film, Jetty, or Jetty and the coaches already said, we're about to get back and watch a lot of film, um, learn from it. We get a lot of opportunities to learn throughout the year, but not a lot of opportunities to learn off losses so far this year. So that's kind of a blessing in this. We get to find our weaknesses and learn from them. Our practices are always super good. So I think this next one, it's gonna be even better. So. Um, we have a fight. Our team has a lot of fight and we have a lot of competition and competitiveness in us. So I'm not worried about us. I'm not, I think um, when we practice on Thursday, we're going to just come in as we always would and work our butts off for the day. One, uh, Maria or Paisley, but you guys had a pretty atypical offensive performance for you guys typically have put out there shooting wise, especially. Could you point to anything that you felt like was the reason? Uh, so you said atypical, like it was a, sorry, I couldn't hear you with the mask. Um, I think, I mean, we played Gonzaga three times this year. We know them really well. They know as well as well. Um, I think they know how to take us out of certain things the same way we do it with them. And today we didn't really hit a lot of our open shots. Uh, I think all of us try to do a little bit too much, maybe a little bit here and there, just not helping each other. Uh, it's normal, it happens. Like Paisley said, we haven't lost much this year and we gotta learn from it. Just take a good look at ourselves, each one of us and figure it out when we're, we're open, we, we got to knock some down. We're not going to hit every single one, but we got to knock some down. So we just got to pick that up. Paisley, you're about to head into the part of the season that matters the most. I know how fond you are of this team, but just once again, how good is this team? And what's to say you guys can't make a run that you remember forever? Um, our team, like I said earlier, is so competitive. We have so many different weapons on our team that can um, produce, whether that's defensively or offensively. So um, our success has come from one another, has come from our coaches, has come from within, and we've practiced. We've been here before. We've been to the NCAA before. We're going to bring our freshmen with us, and it's going to be a fun time. We have a lot of high hopes for ourselves and a lot of um, expectations. So I think just keep rolling. We, we are a resentless, re resentful Relentless. relentless. We're a relentless team that just continues to fight every single day. And I mean, you saw it today. 
we're down whatever double digits and we're still fighting. Um, Nani came in and hit a big bucket for us there at the end. And that's just the character of our bench. So um, I'm not too worried about us. Paisley, can you talk about the physicality that Gonzaga brings? Because it looks like throughout the game, you guys were just sort of beating each other up. I know you took a, a good shot there in the fourth quarter, just the physicality Gonzaga brings to, to games. Um, I mean, they're strong girls. They really build themselves in the weight room, I can tell. So just like us, we're always in the weight room um, trying to get stronger too. But just like us, they're competitors. They're wanting to win. They probably did not like that we smacked them um, on senior night. So they probably wanted to come in and show what was up. So they did that. They played really well. They hit big shots when they had to. And um, their whole team produced, which that was like a downfall for us, I think. So, um, yeah, it's a physical game no matter what, especially um, with the Bulldogs. And the crowd's always fun. We got their fans yelling at us. We got our fans cheering for us. And it's just a pretty um it's a fun it's a fun game to play okay, any other questions from inside the room the first question okay we'll head over to zoom if you have a question you're on zoom for the student athletes uh, please raise your hand we'll go ahead and get started with jeff ferrado go ahead jeff hey paisley uh, i wonder if you could talk about what uh gonzaga did defensively today uh, you guys missed some open shots, like you said, but did they do anything different or did they do anything better? What did you think about the way they played on defense? Um, definitely guarding me. They clogged the paint. Um, they weren't going to let me do too many ISOs, and uh, that took a little just adjustment for me to figure that out and um, maybe find the open player. And they also did the same for Shaylee. They really were going to key in on us and take us away. Um, so that's one thing that they definitely did. Um, they were physical in the post. They went up strong. They really didn't let us get too many um, shots. And the ones that were open was because we were swinging the ball and passing it. So I wish we did a little bit more of that tonight. And I, th I think that a lot of that is on me. Thank you. Okay, any other questions for the student athletes either in the room or please raise your hand if you're on Zoom. Okay, student athletes, you guys are good to go. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Okay, we'll start within the room first. Questions for coach. Go ahead and raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you. Coach, you mentioned um that you guys didn't play like you do normally. Um, I think somebody else mentioned the shooting percentage was was atypical, um, that they beat you by, what was it, 23-9 bench scoring. Um, is that kind of what, what you meant, or is there other things where you, where you say, we didn't really play like we normally do? Well, you know, you've, you've seen us play a lot this year, and when this team plays well, you're looking at the stat sheet, and we have 20 assists to to 22 field goals. I don't, I don't know what it even is, but I bet it's not very good. Um, Gonzaga, what they did is they, they funneled Paisley and Shaley into the middle and they just clogged it up and they just said, Lauren and Maria and whoever else I brought off the bench, we're going to give you the open shot. And that's, they, they took the gamble and it paid off. They, Maria hit a couple of shots, but Maria had a bad calf today. And so it was really hard for her to move like she normally does. Um, and so that was hard, but um, we had opportunities and we didn't hit them. Um, their, their game is very similar to ours. They just run ball screen after ball screen after ball screen. And when those two twin sisters aren't hitting, they're in trouble because there's nowhere else they can score. And so tonight they hit shots. I don't know what they shot from the field, the two of them, but they hit shots tonight and they had the same shots when we played them in Provo and we had the same shots we had in Provo. Um, it just, that's why this game of basketball is so crazy is that within any part of the game, somebody can hit shots, miss shots, miss open looks. I thought when we got it down to three, um, that three that, that she hit in the corner was a big basket. 
um, we, 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 we claw him back and we, we had our chance, but um, Gonzaga is a very, very well coached team and they, they know what their, what their limitations are and they don't beat themselves. And that's why they've been good for all, for all these years. And so it's been a great battle between the two of us. And it's sad that we lost this, but um, my team will bounce back. I promise you. Juddy, with this setback, what seed do you do you think your team's going to receive from the selection committee for the NCAA tournament? Well, hopefully, we still earn to to go to the NCAA tournament. Uh, um, I, I think we're a fifth or sixth, probably now. If we would have won this, maybe a fourth. Um, I think we've earned it. I think we've done it. You don't go by one week of two days and decide teams what's seated. They don't do it with the big boys. So I don't know why they would want to do it with us, but it doesn't make a difference to us. You know, when we won yesterday, I said the same thing. It's, it's, we want to get in a good situation where we match up well with our opponent. And uh, I mean, if Gonzaga and us played a hundred games, we'd go 50, 50. That's we're just so competitive with each other. We know each other so well, and that's what makes this rivalry great. You know, when we get out of the league, I'm gonna we're gonna try to schedule them, and try to play them because I think it's 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 fun basketball. It's it's I mean they love it. They want to play the these are the games they want to play. Judd, when you look at this team and and how how big yeah. this Gonzaga team is, you've obviously faced them twice before in the regular season and. And you did pretty well. What was different about their size tonight where it, it just seemed like they physically were able to kind of impose themselves? Yeah, they. I, I thought offensively they really did a good job on Lauren. Um, they didn't let her get the ball where she wanted to. And then they're, they were hard to shoot over. She, The two other two games, Lauren got them angled and could get some baskets. Tonight they, they, they did a better job of not letting her angle them. Um, and then we really didn't get a lot. Um, of Shaley and Paisley getting all the way to the hoop. We heard them in Provo with that. And, um, you know, we just didn't, we didn't get the opportunity to really do it. Tonight, Shaley had to play a lot of point. That affected us. Not saying that she can, it's just that our offense has been more, more geared for her to be the two most, most of the time in the game. And tonight she had to play a lot of one because of Maria. So, uh, you know, we're going to go watch it and, and hopefully I can get these players to understand what we need to do a little bit better. Coach, your team went undefeated at home this season, has lost just three total times all season long. I may be completely off here, but is it ever good to remember what that feels like heading into the part of the season where there really is no tomorrow? Yeah, there's, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to be sad today, but we're going to be excited to play on. That's the one I, that's what I told my team today after the game. I said, hey, you know, we got outplayed today, but we've had a great season. We've done so many things. You guys are so fun to coach. You work so hard. We don't, don't let one setback ruin what we have done the whole year. And I promise you, I'll be very positive with them the whole week and telling them that. I told them, keep their heads up. Walk out of here proud. You're a conference champs. Okay, we've only done that twice in our eight or 10 years we've been here. You're conference champs. Nobody can take that away from you. And uh, I, I know we're excited to, to keep playing. Sometimes sometimes the loss gets you, gets you a little more focused, a little more, and hopefully that's what will be the case for us. Jeff, since this is the time of year that you want to be playing your best, how do you get this team back on track? Or, or, or does their experience uh, kind of, they do that more on their own than what the coaches do? Well, you know, practices now are not three hour long practices. You've kind of built up your team and you've your team's taken roles and what they're what they need to do. Uh, what we can do is we can say, hey, we did it. We need to do a better job in these areas and really focus on those areas and get better at them. I think one thing we have to get better at, we have to get better that if people take something away from us, don't keep trying the same thing over and over, and over, learn from it. And um, I, I thought tonight we could have passed the ball out a little bit more and maybe let some other people shoot shots, but it, it's hard in the heat of the game when, when we're, our, our team's so competitive and, 
in that way. But uh, we're like I said, we're we're going to work on it. We're going to work on some things defensively. We got to get better. Um, we just didn't move. The last two days, we didn't move. And, you know, people don't realize it. It's 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 a funny game. And we spent the last week working on Portland zone. So that's not a lot of movement. You know, it's, it's running your zone. Then you come and now you're going to play a team with man. And you haven't had a day to practice. In fact, I, I'm almost positive. If we'd had one day rest and worked on our motion before we played Gonzaga, it'd be a better turnout. It'd just be because we had, we didn't get to work on our, our man as much as we, as we wanted to. And, but they had the same deal too. So it's, 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 it's fair. And, but um, I'm excited to get going. I mean, this is what we've, we we had a chance and hopefully we'll, we'll, you know, we'll be able to bounce back and, and really do well in the NCAA tournament. Any other questions from within the room? Okay, we'll go over to Zoom. Please raise your hand if you have a question for Coach on Zoom. We'll start with Jeff Ferrato. Hey, Jeff, I wonder, early in the game, um, it seemed like they sort of set the tone for things, and it felt like maybe you guys were rushing shots a little bit on your positions. Did you see what did you, what did you think yeah, happened so early? I, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I really felt that tonight. The start of the game, they came in and really punched us in the face and, and – got the ball where they wanted to inside and we didn't, we didn't really defend it that well. And then we came down the offensive end and I think we just tried too hard, try to make something happen because they scored. Um, I think if we had come down and maybe moved the ball a little better and just kind of got our, I guess, got our feet a little bit wet, I think would have been better. Um, we just, I just felt like we were climbing uphill most, most of the game and that's a hard way to win sometimes. You Sometimes you have to do that, but I think we're a better team and we're, we're moving and not really worried about it. And um, I mean, it's, it's hard. This is hard playing a team three times and, and, and trying to beat them. And uh, so, but you, you got to give them a lot of credit. They, they came out and were, were really aggressive. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for coach either in the room or on zoom question up front? Coach, you mentioned um, Shaley and Paisley not being able to get to the rim as being kind of like an issue. Um, Tegan had a really good all-around game yesterday. Today, she played, I think, 36 minutes and was not as effective. What do you think was going on? Did, was it a defensive thing, or did she just maybe run out of gas? Uh, I don't think she ran out of gas. She's in very good shape, and she didn't seem tired tonight. Uh, I think just the way they played her, and they put, you know, um, their bigs are very active. Um, they can guard the perimeter and they can guard inside. That's where Gonzaga has been so good for so many years. Um, and they did a good job of locking into her and make her, make her uncomfortable. Um, I just think if we would have had inside presence more uh, where we could have got the ball inside on the one-on-one, I think could have hurt them. And that's something that we, you know, we need to work on for sure. Do you want to take care of one more first question on Zoom? Uh, Liz, Lindsay Schnell, uh, go ahead. Uh, hey, Jeff, I was just wondering, you know, you have 10 days off before you'll play in the NCAA tournament. Is that going to be about rest, or do you feel like Gonzaga did some stuff tonight that now you show you, like, some new things to work on? Uh, they definitely will. You know, when I watch the film, they'll show some things that I can see what they tried to do and – and get my team ready for that. Uh, we do have some banged up kids right now. So um, a couple of days of really not pushing them hard, but then we'll, we'll start like next probably Monday and just, just start when we know who we're playing and start preparing and uh, get our team ready for that team. Um, watch a lot of, yeah, I, I really feel like last year we had a lot of time to prepare for Rutgers. We had a whole week and I thought it really helped my team because we could look at things that they're doing and this is what they're going to do to us. Um, and so I, I'm sure we'll, you know, we'll take advantage of that. Um, it's been hard this week time, you know, players get used to rhythm and they get used to certain things and it kind of throws it off a little bit sometimes with like the tournament we didn't play till Monday. We had a whole week. Um, 
if you know you're going to be in the top two, maybe you'd schedule a game on Tuesday. So you have that, but you didn't never know that. So, you know, we're going to learn from this. And, and I, you know, I, I've been to NCAA many times. We've been very, very successful. Our first game and then this team will get prepared for it. Okay. If you are on zoom and have further questions, leave your hand up. If you're done and on zoom, go ahead and uh, put your hand down. Anybody else in the room? First of all, with the final question for coach. Okay, and I think Lindsay Schnell still may have another question on Zoom. Go ahead, Lindsay. Oh, I don't. I'm sorry. I just forgot to put my hand down. Okay. Looks like we have one final question here in the front. Coach, I was just curious. Um, earlier when you were doing your making your opening statement, there was a little bit of emotion there. I'm just curious like where that's coming from, especially because the season's not over yet. It's emotion because my kids, the players wanted it. And uh, a lot of times in life, you don't, you don't get everything, but you sure want it. Uh, I, you know, and I, that's where I'm emotion is that I know how much the players wanted to win this conference, you know, this tournament. Last year we lost in a heartbreaker and it was tough and, we wanted to really come out and do it. And so that part of it, I'm also crying because, you know, it's one less game of my seniors, you know, that, that they spent so much time and sacrificed for this team. So that's, that's why. And I just want to make sure you guys know I'm very proud of these guys and what they've accomplished so far. And, um, I mean, nobody thought we'd be where we are, but these guys did. And so um, we're going to do our best. We're going to uh, represent our university and this conference and in the, in the NCAA tournament and hopefully make everybody proud. Okay, Lindsay on Zoom, did you have another question? I did. I have to follow up on that. Um, what would make you, you know, how deep of a run are you going to have to get to have the sting of this loss go away? Sweet 16, Elite Eight, or is it going to take the final four? You know, <laughs> it's going to take the first game we win in NCAA. I'm going to forget this game because <laughs> the NCAA is what you fight for and you want to be part of it. Last year we lost and we, we won our first NCAA game. And I mean, I didn't really think about the loss, we were so excited. Uh, to win that game. So it, it's the next game. What, you know, if we win the game, um, it'll be hard. I and mean, we will look back at this and say we had an opportunity. But um, we've had a lot of opportunity this year and been very, very fortunate to be able to be on top. And, um, you know, I was proud of my team, how, how classy they were at the end of the game, of just playing hard, not giving up, huddling up, still doing their thing. That shows the character of these guys. Okay, Lindsay, are you good? Okay, thank you. Hey, thank you. Judkins, Cougar Post Game Coaches Show and Cougar Locker Room Show brought to you by Maersk, an integrated container logistics company and member of the AP Moeller Group, connecting and simplifying trade to help our customers grow and thrive. With a dedicated team of over 80,000 operating in 130 countries, we go all the way to enable global trade for a growing world. Learn more at Maersk.com. Kristen Kozlowski and I back right after this to wrap it up on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the Cougar Locker Room Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, as we conclude our BYU women's basketball broadcast today, we take a look at our economics partner's valuable stat of the game. Whether for tax, financial reporting, or strategic purposes, when your business needs a valuation, the right partner is economics partners. Learn more at econpartners.com. Greg Rubel along with Kristen Koslowski here at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. Gonzaga 71, BYU 59, our final score. Uh, what do you kind of ID as a valuable stat in this one, Kristen? Uh, definitely the three-point shooting. I just thought that Gonzaga was more efficient going 5 for 12 from distance. BYU, on the other hand, 5 for 23. And Gonzaga hit some of those big threes at the very end of the game where we saw two from Trong in that baseline corner to just spread out the score enough where they could keep that lead. BYU this year had been successful when they made at least five threes. In fact, BYU was 20-1 and one with five or more threes, but yet the 
because the efficiency today was what was lacking. Yeah, and that's difficult. When you're trying to get points on the board, they were taking some quick threes in the shot clock and trying to just uh, chip away at that lead, but that was a tough one. Well, we got to hear and see a lot of Juddy there in the postgame presser. You know him as well as anybody, um, and, and he's never one to hide emotion, is he? Wears it on his sleeve, absolutely. Yeah. And, and his heart breaks more so for his players. I mean, he to see what they've put in day in and day out, the blood, sweat, and tears, to get to this point, it's very hard. And then to win this tournament title is a difficult task because you got teams coming in. They're always playing your best. When you're the top team in the WCC, Gonzaga, Portland, every team you face is playing their best because you always have that target on your back. But a lot of credit to the players like Gon- Gonzalez and Harding. I saw a lot of fight in Gustin in the second half, but players that came in and showed the fight that they have. And I really think that they're looking ahead now to the NCAA tournament. They've situated themselves in a good position to get a good seed. We've talked a lot about that 5-6 seed now that they've lost the WCC tournament title. Mm-hmm. But, you know, in a spot where they can succeed, hopefully, in the matchups, matchups are key for them, not location at this point. What matchups will they have? He referenced uh, last year the heartbreak of losing to Gonzaga here in Vegas, but how that's that vanishes from the memory when you win a game like Rutgers and you're in the tournament and you're, in your, and you're, you're basically ch- playing to advance as they will be here soon enough. Yeah, and they, and they face Arizona in the second round and, and know they could have beaten Arizona had they probably had a yeah. healthy Harding who broke her hand. And so I think that that was a great opportunity to realize – how talented you are, that you want to come back, have some unfinished business, and try to get further this season. And the other part to that is you just played a team for a third time. Uh, they know each other as well as any, but you're going to get to the – it's different in the NCAA tournament. People don't know you there. They don't. It's a different style of play. It's almost freeing in a way when you get to a different kind of – a different venue, a different style of opponent. You're, you're, you're the favored team at that point that they're trying to figure things out about. It's a different feel all entirely. For sure. And you – it's very difficult. You you cannot say that enough to beat a team three times, especially in this league, because they are so familiar with each other. Such a big rivalry built up. Two of the best coaches in the league that take away your strengths. The game plan is on point. And I just thought that throughout the game, Gonzaga was able to sustain that level of play that they needed to. Execute it at a higher level, hit shots when they needed to. BYU struggled to find ways to score. And we haven't seen that much this season. So that's a good thing for this team moving forward. We haven't seen that a ton, but they were not able to execute at the level that Gonzaga was. We're going to continue rolling with you on the radio here into the postseason until you have to leave us at some that's point right. uh, for, for the national side of things. But uh, it'll either be myself or Spencer with you somewhere on the radio uh, in the weeks to come. Uh, I'll I'll be with the men until uh, the men are finished playing, and then I'll kind of uh, come and uh, coattail you wherever you are at that point. So I look forward to that time. So that's going to do it for today's broadcast. Our thanks to the crew back at BYU Radio, our control board operator, Tanner Graff, our studio host, Jason Shepard, our studio control coordinator, our producer, uh, Terry uh, Sh- South, and our engineers, Barry Squires and Sean Fay. We thank BYU Radio's Sean O'Neill as well. And so for my color commentary colleague, Kristen Kozlowski, my name is Greg Rubel. Thanking you for tuning in, saying in the meantime and in between time this has been byu women's basketball on the new skin byu sports network good day and so long from las vegas you've been listening to live coverage of byu basketball on the new skin byu sports network coverage of today's game has been brought to you by smith's food and drug smith's now has grocery pickup and online delivery to save you time byu basketball is a production of byu athletics in association with byu broadcasting Special thanks to BYU President Kevin Worthen, Vice President Keith Vorky, Athletic Director Tom Homo, and Associate Athletic Director for Corporate Sponsorship, Casey Stoffer. BYU Basketball is an exclusive presentation of the new skin, BYU Sports Network.